Thank you, James, and thank you, everyone. Um, now we're going to get into the first of our four talks. Um, it is my delight to introduce Dr. Paul Dawson, who is a professor of pediatrics at the Emory University School of Medicine. He's a, a world-renowned leader in bile acid transport, and probably, I would argue, one of the world's most knowledgeable people about the intestinal bile acid transporter. His talk is entitled Ileal Bile Acid Transport, IVAT Inhibitors, Mechanism of Action, and Physiological Effects. All yours, Paul. All right. Thank you so much, Saul. And thank you for the, for the kind introduction. As, as Saul mentioned, I'm going to focus on the mechanism of action and physiologic effects of the, uh, of the IVAT inhibitors. And uh, here are my disclosures. So in the next 15 minutes, I will introduce you to the ileal bile acid transporter and then discuss the, the mechanism of action of the, the uh, IBAT ileal bile acid transporter inhibitors and their proposed effects on cholestatic liver disease and metabolic disease. So the goal of this slide is to introduce you to the synthesis and enterpatic cycling of bile acids. Bile acids are natural detergents synthesized from cholesterol in the liver. And after their synthesis, bile acids are emptied uh, into, uh, are secreted into bile and stored in the gallbladder. And then in response to a meal, uh, bile acids uh, are emptied into the small intestine where they act to facilitate the absorption of fats, fat-soluble vitamins, and cholesterol. Rather than being eliminated in the feces, uh, bile acids are almost quantitatively reabsorbed from the small intestine by the actions of IBAT as well as passive absorption. The bile acids are then carried back to the liver in the portal circulation uh, for uptake by hepatocytes and resecretion into bile. As such, only uh, about 5% of bile acids being secreted uh, by the liver are newly synthesized, and about 95% are bile acids that are, have returned to the liver uh, in the enterohepatic circulation. About half a gram of bile acids are excreted in the feces each day, and this fecal bile acid loss is matched by new hepatic synthesis to maintain a whole body bile acid pool size of about two to four grams in size. Well, since bile acids can undergo multiple rounds of enterohepatic cycling with each meal, the liver may secrete as much as 20 grams of, of bile acid or more per day. Uh, um, in order to facilitate efficient uh, uh, the absorption of nutrients in uh, in in the in uh, bile flow, but as natural detergents, bile acids can also have a, a potential for inducing injury. And bile acid-induced hepatobiliary injury is thought to play an important role in the pathogenesis of cholestatic liver disease. In addition, you will hear later in the, in the symposium from Dr. Senyal, who, who will talk about how bile acid biology impacts metabolic liver disease. But under normal physiologic conditions uh, of enterohepatic cycling of bile acids, bile acids are restricted to compartments like the biliary tract, the gallbladder, as well as the small intestine, where bile acids are present at high millimolar concentrations. Efficient hepatic secretion ensures that bile acids remain at only, only low micromolar concentrations in liver cells. However, a block in bile secretion, such as that found in cholestatic liver disease, including apophic, algeals, and in biliary atresia, can result in a buildup of bile acids in, in the liver, which can directly or indirectly induce liver damage. A short summary of the clinical presentation of these disease, which includes severe pruritus, as well as progression to hepatic fibrosis and cirrhosis is shown here, and will be discussed further by Dr. Loomis later in the symposium. Current approaches to treatment are primarily surgical and medical therapy for these conditions are, is limited, and there's a clear need for, for new effective therapies. So for this question, what are the suitable pharmacologic targets to address these diseases? And I said, please select all that apply. So inhibition of bile acid synthesis within the liver, stimulation of bile acid secretion from the liver, inhibition of bile acid reabsorption into the systemic circulation, or upregulated bile acid catabolism within the liver. So please vote.
so in this case here, 961%. Uh, so the, the clear winner uh, of this election here is uh, inhibition of bile acid reabsorption into the systemic circulation is 96%. Uh, trailed uh, closely by inhibition of bile acid synthesis within the liver, 61%, stimulation of bile acid secretion from the liver, 54%, and then upregulation of bile acid catabolism within the liver uh, at, at 48%. So, uh, in this slide summarizes the potential pharmacologic targets being investigated to reduce the burden of hepatotoxic bile acids. And in fact, it includes um, most of those, uh, all, all those answers that you uh, had previously had uh, indicated on the previous slide. This includes inhibition of hepatic bile acid synthesis, uh, stimulation of bile, acid, of bile secretion from the liver, detoxification of hepatic bile acids. But today's uh, talk uh, will focus on the last of these, uh, which is blocking uh, intestinal or, or hepatic bile acid uptake. And this evening, I'm going to focus on the uh, pharmacologic, uh, uh, the gut restricted IBAT inhibitors as a uh, potential pharmacologic target. So, in this slide, I want to introduce you to an old friend, the, the ileal bile acid transporter or IBAT. IBAT is an integral uh, membrane protein expressed on the enterocyte brush border membrane. Its gut expression is restricted to the distal small intestine with highest levels in the terminal ileum. And IBAT is, is a sodium co-transporter that is responsible for the, uh, in the rate limiting step in the active uptake of conjugated bile acids from the gut lumen. And in doing so, IBAT decides the fate of bile acids, either reabsorption and enterohepatic cycling or uh, its uh, elimination in the feces. So studies suggest that IBAT is, uh, is uh, normally operating close to its transport maximum in healthy human subjects, uh, making IBAT a, a potentially attractive target for interventions that aim to reduce the hepatic uh, bile acid content. In this next slide, I want to introduce you to the mechanism of action of the IBAT inhibitors. The IBAT inhibitors in clinical development are orally administered in a poorly absorbed compounds with little systemic exposure or hepatic metabolism. These, uh, these compounds inhibitors bind to the extracellular face, the, the gut lumen facing portion of IBAT with uh, affinities that are 100 to 1,000 fold higher than that of the affinity for, for native uh, natural bile acids. And in doing so, these tight binding high affinity inhibitors bind to IBAT and act as a, uh, as a competitive inhibitor to prevent IBAT from transporting bile acids from the gut lumen uh, into the enterocyte for entry into the, uh, into the portal circulation, thereby uh, blocking its, its uptake from, from the gut lumen. The next slide summarizes some of the major physiologic effects of IBAT inhibitors. First and foremost, IBAT inhibitors reduce bile acid return to the liver. In doing so, they, uh, these IBAT inhibitors will cause the liver to increase bile acid synthesis in response to the block in the return in the intrahepatic circulation. This increases the hepatic demand for cholesterol, and, and, in, doing, and in response, the, the liver will, um, will increase LDL receptors and, and begin to clear, increase uh, clearance of plasma LDL to try to make up for this uh, cholesterol deficit, thereby re reducing plasma cl cholesterol, LDL cholesterol levels. Uh, uh, inhibition of IBAT will also result in an increased bile acid flux into the colon, which will uh, result in an increase in colonic secretion and increased colonic motility. This next slide uh, summarizes the effects, the predicted effects of IBAT inhibitors on cholestasis. So, uh, inside, I'm using biliary atresia to illustrate the predicted effects. And in biliary atresia, loss of bile ducts leads to a block in bile flow and a bile acid secretion into the small intestine. This results in bile acid accumulation in the liver and regurgitation of bile acids into the systemic circulation. Following surgical treatment, 
the Kasai uh, porto enterostomy procedure, bioflow into the intestine is restored uh, and levels of bile acid in the liver and systemic circulation are reduced. However, bile acids are still being, the bile acids that are being secreted here into the intestine are, are still being reabsorbed by IBAT and sent back to the cholestatic liver in a process that was once termed by my mentor, Dr. Alan Hoffman, as organ warfare. Administration of an IBAT inhibitor would, would block the active return of bile acids from the intestinal lumen uh, to the liver, blocking this cycle with a predicted net reduction in hepatic bile acid retention and potential for reducing bile acid induced damage. And the next speaker, uh, Dr. Loomis, will expand on these points as she discussed the therapeutic roles for IBAT inhibitors in cholestatic liver disease with an emphasis on LGL syndrome. The predicted effects of IBAT inhibitors on metabolic disease are summarized here. Uh, and so the, re the reduced return of bile acids to the liver will uh, result in, as I said, a deep repression of bile acid synthesis, a depletion of hepatic uh, uh, cholesterol levels, but it also reduces hepatic triglyceride levels uh, through FXR signaling methods, as well as probably by blocking or uh, impairing uh, fat absorption uh, from the small intestine as you reduce the, the bile acid uh, concentrations in the lumen. There may be a reduction in bile acid pool size and certainly a reduction in plasma LDL cholesterol. In the distal ileum, there's decreased bile acid uptake and decreased FXR FGF15-19 uh, signaling. And as bile acids empty into the colon, there's increased concentrations there and increased microbial bile acid metabolism signaling through the bile acid receptor TGR5, and ultimately an increase in GLP-1 production, which may account for some of the me beneficial metabolic effects of bile acid sequestrant in IBAT inhibitors um, that, have, that have been demonstrated in various models. So in summary, uh, there's a clear need for pharmacologic treatments to address cholestatic and metabolic liver diseases. Intestinal IBAT inhibition leads to uh, changes the fate of bile acid and increases fecal loss and, and reducing the return of bile acids to the liver. In this novel class of IBAT inhibitors in, in development, uh, which are designated by the suffix uh, uh, ixabat, have implications for cholestatic liver disease uh, that Dr. Carpin will be discussing further, as well as implications for metabolic diseases, which will be the subject of Dr. Sanyal's talk. And finally, these gut-restricted IBAT inhibitors are predicted to be less susceptible to the effects of liver disease associated changes in, in hepatic metabolism, which could affect drug dosing as well as drug-drug uh, uh, interactions. And the remainder of the symposium will explore the potential applications of these uh, developmental uh, agents. Uh, thank you for your attention.